Good morning, grandkids. Well, we are going to read another book today, but I had to go out and uh, go through some caves and stuff and find some. And I decided I wanted to sit outside, way up here somewhere I had been exploring, and read a book. Do something different. Get outside of the house. And I wanted to make an area here on this rock to sit on. And I have mods to let you create ledges to sit on or to create places to sit and to sit cross-legged. And I can't make any of those work. I don't know how to do them. When I, when I go to my uh, magic and powers places menu, um, they're there and when I click on one to equip it, it gives me a swirly blue thing or something like it was going to be a spell. But I, but I, and I put it in my favorites and I put a number on it. So then when I got out of my favorites, I clicked on that number, but it doesn't put it in my hand. And it isn't a shout. So I don't know how to make it work. I'll probably have to ask my son to show me, and then another time <laughs> I'll do that. So, instead of just standing here reading, I'll go back over here and sit down. <laughs> well, for heaven's sake, sit. Oh, I guess I should, <laughs> well, hmm. Are you having some kind of breakdown or something? <laughs> Talk to me. Yes, Inigo, I think I am. Maybe I'll, maybe I ought to get rid of this guy here. Get up. Let me see if I can throw him over there. Am I standing too close to him? All right, let's do this. Get over there. Get. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do this. I am gonna throw you over. I will, I will. Him swinging these like hey I didn't tell you to do that yes I guess I did why can't I lift his leg up well guys I guess we're just gonna have to sit there and look at him swing in there. That is just too funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wasting a lot of time. When I when I pick the book up, why? It'll be here, there. I'll sit like this. It's getting nighttime. I better make it daytime or I won't be able to read. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, all right. I'm sorry for getting so silly. I really haven't had anything to drink, I promise. I really would like to throw him over the edge, though. My legs are tired, too. But we should continue on our way. I'm sorry, but I'm going to read a book, and you go, you're just going to have to wait. Go sit down somewhere if you're tired. All right. We are going to read Cake and the Diamond. I don't have any idea what it's about. Okay. The Cake and the Diamond by Ethan Wendell. I don't know. 
I was in the rat in the pot, a foreigner corner club in Aldrum, Aldrum, the rat in the pot. That doesn't sound like a very sanitary place to be. Talking to my fellow rats <laughs> when I first saw the woman. Now, Breton women are fairly common in the rat in the pot. As a breed, they seem inclined to wander far from their perches in high rock. Old Breton women, however, are not so migratory, and the wizened old Biddy drew attention to herself. Oh, she was an old woman, wandering about the room, talking to everyone. Nimleth and Odid were at their usual places, drinking their usual stuff. Odid was showing off a prize he had picked up in some illicit manner, a colossal diamond, large as a baby's hand and clear as spring water. I was admiring it when I heard the creaking of old bones behind me. Good day to you, friends, said the old woman. My name is Abella Critit, and I am in need of financial assistance assistance to facilitate my transportation to Ald Ladina. I wish everything wasn't so hard to pronounce. You'll want to see the temple for char charity, said Nimleth curtly. I'm not looking for charity, said Abella. I'm looking to barter services. Oh my, don't make me sick, old woman, laughed Odiad. Did you say your name was Abella Credit? I asked, are you related to Abella Credit, the High Rock Alchemist? Closely related, she said with a cackle. We are the same person. Perhaps I could prepare you a potion in exchange for gold. I noticed that you have in your possession a very fine diamond. The magical qualities of diamonds are boundless. Sorry, old woman. I ain't giving it up for magic. It was trouble enough stealing this one, said Odiad. I've got a fence who will trade it for gold. But your fence will demand a certain percentage, will he not? What if I could give you a potion of invisibility in exchange? In return for that diamond, you could have the means to steal many more. A very fair exchange of services, I would say. It would be, but I have no gold to give you, said Odiad. I'll take what remains of the diamond after I've made the potion. If you took it to the Mages Guild, you'd have to supply all the other ingredients yourself and pay for it as well. But I learned my craft in the wild where no potion makers existed to dissolve diamonds into dust. When you must do it all by hand, by simple skill, you are blessed with remnants those fool potion makers at the guild simply swallow up themselves. That sounds all very nice, said Nimleth, but how do we know your potion is going to work? If you make one potion, Take the rest of Odiad's diamond and leave. We won't know until you've gone whether the potion works or not. Ah, uh, trust is so rare these days, sighed Abella. I suppose I could make two potions for you, and there'd still be a little bit of the diamond left for me. Not a lot but perhaps enough to get me to old Redding, Dania. Then you could try the first potion right here and now and see if you're satisfied or not. But I interjected, you could make one potion that works and one that doesn't and take more of the diamond. She could even give you a slow acting poison. And by the time she got to old Redania, You'd be dead. Bladen Kenrath, you Dunmer are suspicious. I will hardly have any diamond left, but I could make two potions of two doses each. 
so you can satisfy yourself that the potion works and has no negative effects. If you still don't trust me, come along with me to my table and witness my craft if you'd like. So it was decided that I would accompany Abella back to her table where she had all her traveling bags full of herbs and minerals to make certain that she was not making two different potions. It took nearly an hour of preparation, but she kindly allowed me to finish her half-filled flagon of wine while I watched her work. Splintering the diamond and powdering the pieces required the bulk of the time. Over and over again, she waved her gnarled hands over the gym, intoning ancient enchantments, breaking the facets of the stone into smaller and smaller pieces. Separately, she made pastes of minced bitter green, crushed red bulbs of Galarco Spey, and driblets of Siciliani oil. I finished the wine. Old woman, I finally said with a sigh, how much longer is this going to take? I'm getting tired of watching you work. The mages' guild has fooled the populace into thinking alchemy is a science, she said. But if you're tired, rest your eyes. My eyes closed seemingly of their own volition. <laughs> no, it was of the wine's volition. But there had been something in that wine, something that made me do what she asked. I think I'll make up the potion as cakes. It's much more potent that way. Now tell me, young man, what will your friends do once I give them the potion? Mug you in the street afterwards to retrieve the rest of the diamond, I said simply. I didn't want to tell the truth, but there it was. I thought so, but I wanted to be certain. You may open your eyes now. I opened my eyes. Abella had made a small presentation on a wooden platter, two small cakes, and a silver cutting knife. Pick up the cakes and bring them to the table, said Abella, and don't say anything except to agree with whatever I say. I did as I was told. It was a curious sensation. I didn't really mind being her puppet. Of course, in retrospect, I resent it, but it seemed perfectly natural at the time to obey without question. Abella handed the cakes to Odiad, and I dutifully verified that both cakes were made the same way. <laughs> no, because I was knocked out with wine. <laughs> she suggested that he cut one of the cakes in half and she would take one piece and he'd take the other. Just so he would know that they worked and weren't poisoned. Odiad thought it was a good idea and used Abella's knife to cut the cake. Abella took the piece on the left, popped it into her mouth. Odiad took the piece on the right and swallowed it more cautiously. Abella and all the bags she was carrying vanished from sight almost instantly. Nothing happened to Odiad. Why did it work for the witch and not for me? cried Odiad. Because because the diamond dust was only on the left-hand side of the blade, said the old chemist through me. I felt her control lessening as the distance grew, and she hurried invisibly down the dark, alvroomed street away from the rat in the pot. We never found the Bella, Credite, or the diamond. Whether she completed her pilgrimage to Aldridania is anyone's guest. guess. Guess. Cakes had no effect, except to give Odiad a bad case of droops that lasted for nearly a week. <laughs> Are they sure that they mean droops? <laughs> okay, so that's the end of that story. And it's evening. It took the whole day for me to goof around and then read a book. Good creep. Inigio. Are you considering our next move? Here is my plan. Kill everything. Take anything that's not nailed down and get out. I believe we already did that. 
We can go home now, Inigo. <laughs> All right, grandkids, since I can't throw him over and Inigo is anxious to go home, there I guess I'll say goodbye. There is a time for sitting and a time for action. This is the latter. <laughs> okay, Inigo, okay, we're going to go home. Goodbye, grandkids. <laughs>